Good morning, everyone. Um, I'll just do a quick introduction of our speaker, uh, Dr. Tatiana Jacobs, who is uh, an MD, if I understand correctly, with a, with a degree from Germany, Würzburg, and uh, then went to uh, Mass uh, INR to Harvard training uh, with uh, Dr. Dick Maslin, who is really one of the authorities and pioneers of retinal circuits, and in particular, tracing and categorizing endocrine cells and ganglion cells. That was really, he, he, has, he has retired just, I believe, but he has been doing phenomenal work on, on, on uh, RGCs and endocrine cells. And uh, she started to collaborate with Simon John there, who, does, who is one of the pioneers in glaucoma, and then charted her own independent syncretic way of, of uh, <coughs> looking at glial cells in, uh, in, in, in glaucoma. And when I started to kind of slowly dip my toes into this field, I immediately re realized that her studies are the most detailed and beautiful and kind of insightful in the whole field. So uh, it gives me a great pleasure. I can sort of introduce her here and uh, looking forward to her talk. Thank you very much for that introduction. Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, and um, the title of my talk is um, Age versus Glaucoma Related changes in the optic nerve. So I have no um, financial relations to disclose. Um, so as you undoubtedly know, the prevalence of glaucoma increases with age, and in particular, after um, a person turns uh, 50, 55, uh, and that is true for all ethnic groups. Um, the, in, uh, um, the curve starts getting steeper and steeper and the incidence of glaucoma increases. However, age, of course, is a glaucoma risk factor that we cannot do all that much about. We cannot reverse the arrow of time. So um, the reason why we study um, age-related changes in, um, in the optic nerve um, is twofold. Well, first, we, one cannot do anything about time itself, but maybe by finding age-related changes, we could directly address, uh, address these and hopefully save some ganglion cells. And the second thing is age, of course, is also a confounding factor. So whenever we look at an optic nerve that has glaucoma or had glaucoma, we are presumably also looking at an aged nerve. So it is important to see exactly which changes are related to age, which are glaucoma, or which occur in both. So I will focus on the optic nerve for the rest of the talk. However, I would like to add a little bit of a disclaimer here. Um, Age affects many parts of the eye, not just the optic nerve, and I'm not at all <coughs> implying that the changes in other tissues are not important. So let me briefly introduce the, um, the um, structure <coughs> of the optic nerve in mice. Mice do not have a lamina cribrosa that is made of collagens and um, as it's shown in the, lowest, um, right, in the lowest right panel, which would be a monkey lamina cribrosa. However, they have a structure that looks relatively similar. Now, the um, axons of ga retinal ganglion cells, as you see on the um, panel A, are unmyelinated until they cleared a lamina cribrosa-like structure. So that gives the optic nerve in that region this glassy appearance, and then in the myelinated region, it becomes opaque. So this unmyelinated portion contains a region that we call the lamina cribrosa, shown in panels A and B in the lower, um, uh, the lower panels A and B, um, where the um, indicated in red are um, optic nerve astrocytes that form a sieve-like structure which very much looks like a lamina cribrosa. However, it doesn't contain any collagen, or at least no other than collagen 4, which is associated with uh, blood vessels. In the um, monkey, or in humans too, uh, the ganglion cell axons, which also you um, see um, indicated in, in, in green in panel A, are directly in contact with, um, with um, astrocytes that line the lamina cribrosa pores. So it's not 
dissimilar, only of course it is much bigger. So if you look at the individual astrocyte that makes up the um, lamina cribrosa, here we're looking at a mouse strain that is, um, has several astrocytes, but not all, labeled with GFP. So it is like a, it appears like a live Golgi stain. So in, indicated on the bottom are the plane of sections. So in the left-hand panel, you're looking at a cell in, um, that is cut in a longitudinal optic nerve. So you can see that the, um, that it spans with its processes. It spans most, at least half of the optic nerve. And as you see in the face-on image on the, in the right-hand panel, that the astrocyte touches with its end feet both the blood vessel plexus inside the optic nerve, indicated in red, and the peel wall that uh, surrounds the optic nerve. <clears throat> so um, for the rest, I would like to focus on transmission electron microscopy rather than light microscopy to look at age-related changes in more detail. So we had uh, several mice, um, naive mice and glaucomatous mice that um, from three months to over two years old. Um, mice can live to about three years, um, at least in captivity. And our glaucoma group was in, um, done with microbead injection. Uh, that's what is shown on the, in the left-hand panel. So it's an injection of little polystyrene microparticles that get trapped in the trabecular meshwork and drive up the pressure to about uh, 20 millimeters of mercury, and then it slowly comes down. The normal IOP in mice is around 10. So then we make um, cross sections through the glial lamina as indicated in that image. And we sample the optic nerve uh, with um, several um, high, um, uh, high resolution images. And that's what it looks like. So since this is a bit difficult to read, I false colored some of the um, components for you. Outlined in red are the Retinal, uh, the, the optic nerve astrocyte processes that, um, that intersect into the optic nerve and, and organize the um, retinal ganglion cell axons into bundles. Some of the axons here, not all, but some of the axons here are indicated in, in outline in red, uh, in, in yellow. And at that level of magnification, you can also start seeing mitochondria, which are here um, indicated in, in, in pale green. So that's what it looks like in a young optic nerve. And also you see that the axons are, of course, unmyelinated. So tracking um, mice from uh, cohorts of mice from three months to 30 months, you see that there is no general disruption of, uh, uh, no disruption of the general outline of the optic nerve, but you see that the, um, that the axons start um, looking odd. I mean, at least some of them. So we see in, in the 18 months and the 30 month old mice uh, that we get um, these big and swollen axons that um, lose their internal structure. It's pretty obvious in that, in that axon on the, in the 30 month um, old mouse on the, in, the, in, the, in the upper half of the panel. So the, these axons lose their internal structure. I mean, these little dots are um, in, in the normal axons. These are microtubules and um, intermediate filaments. They seem to disappear. And also, you can see at that level of magnification that in the older mice, the mitochondria start um, swelling up and um, looking somewhat unhealthy. The same can be seen in, um, in longitudinal section. This is a longitudinal section. And if you see, look at the 18 and 30 month old um, uh, um, uh, nerves, you see that ganglion cell axons, again indicated in yellow, have relatively normal or slim looking segments. And then they have these bulbs where there you can almost always find abnormal looking mitochondria inside. So this is what it looks like in, in, um, in normal aged mice. We haven't done anything bad to these mice. Um, in glaucoma, in glaucoma, there's optic nerves. And again, I false colored the astrocyte processes, axons, and mitochondria. But if I didn't know what was wrong with that mouse, or if there was anything wrong with that mouse, I would say, yeah, it was old. Um, but it wasn't. Uh, this mouse was three months old, but 
from the two month to three month, um, it had a microbead injection at two months and it had an elevated IOP for just one month. However, in many ways, the changes that we're seeing, these huge irregular and swollen axons, very much re resemble, um, re resemble the changes that we would also see in age. So um, we can use these images to quantify many of our um, many of our findings. Now what we really care for is exon loss because this is what essentially uh, drives visual, uh, visual defects. And um, mice, at least T57 black 6, start out with around 50,000 or so exons. And in a linear fashion, as a function of time, exons are lost in, um, in, in, in normal mice at about a rate of 7,000 per year. Um, in human beings, this is fairly similar, though the numbers are apparently somewhat lower, at least um, overall, as are about um, 4,000 per year. Um, however, when you um, look at the glaucomatous optic nerves here indicated with red, um, r red symbols, um, they lose exons at a far higher rate. Well, that is, um, that is um, to be expected. And thus, they would look like um, they, are, they are much older than they actually are. Now, counting axons is really not, not that trivial, and it's a, lot of, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of boring work. So we were looking at um, some uh, measurements that are maybe easier to do and not quite so, um, not quite so, so time intensive. And uh, the, the, the method, the, the parameter we hit on was axonal diameter variance. I mean, you remember that there are some axons that still stay small and apparently healthy. And these um, axons that are really um, large in caliber and, um, and, and, and seem to be like, swollen. And uh, so with age, the axonal diameter variance is what increases, and that correlates really well with age, with a R square of 0 0.89. And here again, the glaucomatous um, optic nerves are indicated with red symbols. They appear to be at least one and a half to two years old. So uh, changes that we would see within um, a year or one and a half years of um, normal aging when the mice are just sitting on the shelf um, will be the, the, the same changes will, it, will, will occur in glaucoma if, if it just was going on for one month. So the axons itself is not the only thing that change with age and, um, and in glaucoma. We try to quantify the changes in axonal mitochondria a bit more rigorously by um, coming up with a grading scheme uh, for axonal mitochondria. And and we, um, we came up with a grading scheme where a grade one mitochondria um, in, the, in the top panel is basically one where we can't see anything wrong at all. Grade two are mitochondria which have apparently lost, lost some of their crystal, but I would still think that they were probably pretty normal. And then um, we have, um, we have uh, um, grades of severity till um, in grade five, we pretty much can't see any crystal anymore. The only reason why I can still tell that it isn't mitochondrion is because it has a, it has a double membrane. Uh, so the um, number of so the number of normal or near normal <coughs> mitochondria in young mice is over 70%, and then it drops uh, through, um, uh, throughout a, a mouse's lifetime. And that is, again, not unexpected. And in glaucoma, we see um, that is the um, bar on the, on the far, far right. Uh, in glaucoma, we see. Um, Again, changes that would indicate that the mouse was actually much older than it, it was older than it actually was. So again, these changes can be quantified by measuring the mitochondria and measuring the um, variance of mitochondrial diameters, 
and these two correlate very, very closely with age. So we have a series of very predictable age-related changes, and I can show how glaucoma um, compares to those. Now, I should make one more comment to, uh, to mitochondria. So when, we, when I say the mitochondria swell and they change and, and, and you see abnormal and uh, bad mitochondria, this is true only for the axonal mitochondria. So um, if you um, look at astrocytic mitochondria, they are start out bigger and um, uh, um, more, uh, they, they, they accumulate more, more, more dye than, um, than the axonal mitochondria to begin with. But they seem to stay completely normal, even in very old and in glaucomatous mice. So when I say there are profound changes in there's pathology in, in my mitochondria, I mean axonal mitochondria, not mitochondria in, in, the, in, in, in the astrocytes or other components of the optic nerve. So now there are, of course, other things that we can um, quantify in the optic nerve, this image on the, on the left shows a montage of about like 40 individual images. You can count the astrocytic nuclei to see if there is a indication of, of, of astrocyte hyperplasia. There is not. And um, finally, uh, other components in the optic nerve, in this case the blood vessels, uh, we can also um, uh, quantify the changes that you can see in blood vessels uh, in the um, in the old mice and in glaucomatous mice. So panels A and B show blood vessels in mice that are essentially normal. Um, a Ten months is relatively old for a mouse. You can see lumen and a little bit of um, that's really I would need a mouse for that, but <laughs> this this is collagen in the in the basement membrane of, um, of the blood vessels in the, in the optic nerve. And as is true for many other systems too, in a aged blood vessels, the basement membrane becomes thicker, you get more collagen, you get more fibrils. This is quite um, statistically significant if you look at aged mice. And in glaucoma, something similar seems to happen though it's not quite as pronounced. So um, if you quantify the basement membrane thickness and the collagen in the basement membrane in glaucomatous mice, it falls kind of between young mice and aged mice. And um, I think that maybe if had we waited a little longer than one, one month, it might have been more pronounced. So we see glaucomatous changes in the blood vessels in the optic nerve too that resemble those of normal aging. So, I'm coming to the summary. We do see axon loss, as expected in glaucoma, of course. Um, during normal physiological aging, mice lose about 7,000 axons a year. In glaucoma, it's about 11,000 per month. This is based on like about 20 um, uh, mice in aged mice and uh, four or five glaucomatous mice. We see us. Um, we see an increase in axonal diameter variance. Um, we see signs of mitochondrial pathology. Um, astrocyte hypertrophy, that is astrocyte processes becoming <coughs> thicker. I didn't uh, show the quantification of that. Astrocyte hyperplasia, we don't see. That is um, in contrast to some other descriptions in the literature, but I've never seen that in the optic nerve. And in the Blood vessel ba basement membrane with aging, we see the um, characteristic and, ex um, and expected uh, changes in basement membrane thickness and basement membrane collagen. And in glaucoma, I think we see similar changes, though um, they somewhat fall into the middle, so I'm, um, I'm, 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 I, I um, put it into, in, in, I put it in brackets. And finally, I would like to come to um, the acknowledgments. I would like to acknowledge all the people who helped to work on that project, and in particular, the young person on the, um, uh, on the, in, the in the top panel, that's Ying Zhu, who did the beautiful EM work. And I also thank 
our support from the Chinese Scholarship Council and the NIH mainly. And thank you very much for your attention, and I think I can take some questions. So if you um, elevate IOP and then lower it back, do you see changes that are reversible or? Yes. Um, if you lower, I mean, it depends on, I mean, for how much and for how long. I mean, um, so what we have done is 30 millimeters of mercury for an hour or two hours. And in, if for one hour, you do see changes in the astrocytes. I mean, you see astrocyte reactivity, the processes become thicker. Um, but no axon loss, and after about, I think, two weeks or so, the astrocytes return back to normal. Now, if the injury is more severe, if you um, wait longer or increase the pressure more than that, then um, one starts seeing some ganglion cell axon drop out. And um, it's not very pronounced, but um, you see some exon, uh, exonal drop out. And then the um, astrocytes do not entirely return to normal either. But in this, I mean, here we had like about one month of relatively not, not um, I mean, it's like 20 millimeter and 15 millimeter of mercury. That's kind of realistic, uh, realistically increased um, IOP, not like on an ischemic level. But that causes quite uh, dramatic changes in the optic nerve already. Are there any characteristics in the glaucomatous nerve that aren't present in an aging nerve, or, or do they? Yes, uh, there are some changes in the astrocytes that um, are um, difficult to uh, to see in a, in the EM. So these are more easily seen in um, in um, a light microscopy. So the astrocytes start growing out kind of new processes and change their morphology. I didn't have the time in half an hour to go over all that in, 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 in detail. <coughs> but there are decidedly changes in the astrocytes that we don't see just in norm that are not uh, just occurring as a, as a function of aging. Um, yes? I know your study didn't really look at this, but I know that there's an age-correlated loss of axons in the brain. Do you think there's a direct correlation between the retina and the brain as far as age-related axon loss? Mm. I mean, um, I, but we really haven't looked at the brain, so I'm, 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 I'm not sure. So and another thing that we haven't, we haven't in this part of the study um, looked at is at factors that are intrinsic to the, uh, to the, uh, the, the, um, the ganglion cells that lead to a ganglion cell loss, or whether this ganglion cell axon loss is caused by something other than the ganglion cells itself that uh, have, it goes on in the optic nerve and might be mediated by microglia or by, by, by astrocytes. But for that, we would probably have to do like a time series of RNA sequencing of ganglion cells and of the glia, and that's well, it's hard to do, but uh, not hard to do, it's expensive. But um, um, we haven't really um, looked at factors that are intrinsic to the ganglion cells that might um, explain their progressive loss. And that would, I think, be similar in the brain. I mean, they're fairly similar to other projection neurons. Mm -hmm. Are there any models of Sleep apnea, I'm not sure. Uh, normal tension glaucoma, I mean all mouse models of glaucoma, as far as I know, um, are ocular hypertensive models. Um, there are some, you know, there are some genes that have been associated with glaucoma by GVOS studies. One of them is um, CDKN to BAS, which is this little, no, this long um, non-coding RNA, and we don't really understand why that predisposes to glaucoma. Um, there is a mouse that uh, has a, no a deletion of the CDKN to BAS, um, or some of its region, 
these mice are more vulnerable to glaucoma, but there is a whole lot of other pathology in the eye, so they are very difficult to study. Um, but that would be one that comes relatively close. As far as I know, the other models are all ocular hypertensive models, even though in some cases the ocular hypertension isn't um, very pronounced. So Rachel Wong showed, and, and many others, that when you elevate IOP, you get basically an increased change in excitability of RGCs. Mm -hmm. and and uh, they're across f different functional classes. And uh, <coughs> how that would suggest that the kind of dendritic, som somatodendritic compartment is also playing a role in, in the disease, but it's often ignored, right? <coughs> what, what do you think about that? I mean, that there are changes in the dendritic structure of ganglion cells is undeniable. I mean, uh, I, this has been shown by many by many people. I mean, and there, these changes too are very predictable. They kind of retract higher, they lose higher order dendrites, and um, there's no doubt about that. Now the question is, what exactly is what happens first? And um, here, I mean, I mean, probably most people right now would say. Um, Whatever happens first is in the optic nerve head. Not everybody, but um, um, it's. It, I. Um, I mean, we we have never really tried to 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 to, um, to dissect that. But um, it's it, it's very difficult to see wherever you look first. Wherever you look, you can find subtle changes long before you find, let's say, changes in the pattern ERG. Thank you very much.